Hello, everyone, and welcome to Beijing and day two coverage of the Junior Grand Prix Final. As we look at the sprawling and beautiful city of Beijing, home to 21 million people. Beijing, the only city to host the Summer Olympic Games in 2008, Winter Olympics in 2022. I'm Ted Barton, along with Mark Hanratty and the Junior Women's Free Program coming up in just a few moments. Now looking at the spectacular facility, the National Indoor Stadium, which has a capacity of 20,000 spectators during the 2008 Summer Olympics. This facility hosted the artistic gymnastics, trampoline, and handball events, and in 2022 played host to ice hockey. But this week, junior and senior Grand Prix final, the best figure skaters in the world competing for the title as they will soon move on to their domestic events in the ISU Championships in January. Mark Hanready covered the senior pairs as we take a look at the preparation for this event. The senior pair event was quite spectacular indeed, Mark. Yes, absolutely. It was wonderful to see three teams, all of the medalists scoring over 200 points in total. And now, it, at this point in the season, starts to question who's going to be the front runner leading into the World Championships by March. But I think that's really wonderful is that we've got a competition. There's no front runner. It just makes it more exciting for us and for the sport. Yeah, it was ever so close. Just one point separating first and second, and one point from second to third. So. So close indeed. They'll all go home now to national events, of course, and, and get ready for the ISU European Championships and the ISU Four Continents Championship before they'll head to Montreal for the World Figure Skating Championships later in March. The junior women, though, will take center stage right now. And boy, there's some great talent in this event. Yes, and talking of you know, close results in the senior pairs event, which we've just enjoyed, but the close results in the junior women's event after the short program was just 1.2 points separating first to third so that 1.2 points is the equivalent of maybe a double toe so that the consequences are that there's a lot to play for in terms of who's going to become the champion here now they're so all highly skilled technically but they also have wonderful programs and great skating skills as we see japan versus korea here talked about that dominance by these two nations on the junior grand prix series we see it once again here in the final. Yes, and it really could have been and it was game to some extent. The heavy favorite Mao Shimada though hasn't come out triumphant in the short program. She had a slight mistake on her triple loot, and she was appeared to be desperately disappointed with her performance yesterday. So she has increased technical difficulty to come today. We wish her all the very best succeeding with that. If you take a look at the technical panel, of course, Mao has not had to be seeing number two beside her name very often, so that was a bit of a surprise as we get the countdown here in Beijing to the start of the Junior Women's Free, and there they are. Boy, six remarkably talented and mature skaters in the Junior Final. Skating first from the Republic of Korea, Min Sol Kwan. Pardon me, Jia. Uh, Min Sol Kwan, she has a 62.12 after the short program. And then Yu Song Kim from Korea as well with a 62.71. And from Japan, Emi Nakai, 65.04 after the short. And also from Japan, Rina Zono with a 67.87. Skating fifth, Mao Shimada from Japan, 68.27. And with less than a point lead from the Republic of Korea, Jia Shin. Fascinating, Ted, to see that four of the six women competing here competed in last year's Junior Grand Prix final as well. So they've demonstrated some really impressive consistency to secure a spot again at this event. 
Yeah, and also this the increase of age, of course, will be holding juniors in the junior category for a little bit longer. We're starting this to see that happen now. Place, but all these athletes are so young at this stage. And it's exciting to consider what will they continue to develop we, as we look at Min Sol Kwan, who is just such a wondrous performer. Some of her performance skills are the best in juniors and seniors. She uses some incredible facial expression. And I wonder how that will develop for this athlete over the coming season as a junior. Well, it's going to be interesting with all six of these athletes to see how they develop over the next two, three, four years. They're already presenting such mature performances and high skill level as well. And it, it's so close that it comes down, as you mentioned, just like a double toe loop or a double loop, a double axle. You're going to need to skate clean. This 14-year-old skater is currently in fifth place. This is her first season competing on the junior As we look at Yi Song Kim, we've obviously referenced the depth and strength of the field in both Japanese and Korean women's skating, which is evident insofar as they are the only two nations in the Grand Prix final. So Yi Song Kim has further competition within her family from her twin sister, Yu Jae Kim. And she acknowledged, though, in an interview that how wonderful it is to have the support from her sister. Her sister only had one Junior Grand Prix assignment this year, uh, and so she was 18th in the rankings of the Junior Grand Prix after her bronze in Istanbul. But I'm sure she is at home supporting Yi Song Kim, her twin, every step of the way now. Family affair, support all around, of course. And that would be interesting at home, and to have the support of your fans and your colleagues at the rink, but also at home is an unusual experience. So we take a look at Amina Kai. This skater is in fourth place. And it was Yuji Kim that Amina Kai ousted from a medal position at the Junior World Championships in March. I mean, another one of the experienced skaters who competed at the Junior Grand Prix final last season. But unlike her medal winning success at World Junior, she finished just off the podium 12 months ago in Torino. So she'll be hoping to move up from that same spot she finds herself in after the short program yesterday. They all carry so much speed and flow across the ice. Of the same triple triple combinations. Will we see the triple axle come out Shimada and or a quad? This Nagoya resident is in third place after the Rina. short program. Rina. This is her first season on the Junior Grand Prix Series. And she Rina a comes into Rina this event having placed third at the All Japan Rina. Junior Rina. Nationals Rina. behind Mao Shimada Japan, in November. So many of these Rina. Korean and Japanese skaters have very serious domestic events as well. And much of the domestic events were dictated who will go to the Winter Youth Olympics it takes place next month as well. There is Mao Shimada, undefeated this skater the past is in two seasons overall the in the events. And and the she has a triple axel and a quad. We'll see what she, she will deliver on this night. This last season. And she should she maintain her international winning streak, in she will make some Japan, sense of history by being the first Shimada, woman Mao. to win back-to-back -back junior Grand Prix finals. Her, oh, yeah, 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 struggling with the quarter there, but her fellow Japanese skating star Miku Miki-Ando won this junior Grand Prix final twice, but for two years apart between her title wins. This skater is in first place after the short program. She calls Seoul there is the leader. as a two-time and defending world junior silver medalist. Yeah, Shin as well from the Republic of Korea. So highly skilled as well. But, you know, Mark, I wanted to ask Korea, you what your thought. What are the differences Shin, between these six skaters? I mean, they all do the same element, technical elements, other than, of course, the triple axle and the quad. But there's so little difference. Uh, I mean, it's, it's really quite fractional. 
However, I have to say, Gia and Mao, the top two after the short program, do have fundamentally stronger skating skills. And as we look at that triple loop, more height and distance in that jump, so more box ticking in regards to what the judges need to give higher creative execution. And it's uh, Mao, obviously, Shimada is the junior world champion, but Gia Shen is a. Ooh, nice reflection from Amina Kai. But. Gia Shen is a two-time World Junior Silver medalist, and she said after the short program yesterday that she has learned at her 10 to 15 years of age through the seasons that she's had to over to learn strategies to overcome nervousness. So perhaps it is, to some extent, increased experience for the likes of Gia Shen who has lent into that to be able to leave the field after the first day of event. Yeah, I would imagine with all of the six skaters on these, they don't train together, obviously, J Japanese and Korean skaters, they may train with their uh, teammates, of course, but the, I don't want to say tension, but the, the stress and the excitement to be in the top six in the women's category here in juniors is quite special indeed, and you can feel and look and visually see the intensity on that six-minute warm-up, and here we go, women's, junior women's free program. Our first skater represents Republic of Korea. From the Republic of Korea, 14-year-old Min Song Kwan. She is in sixth place after the short program. She has 119.52 seasons best in the free. She'll want to up that score here right now. And she will skate to let me be your star. Waiting to stop. 
Well, what a way to start the women's free skate. Min Sol Kwan from Korea, just one of the queens of the choreo sequence. She Republic just oozes charm and delight. And it's going to be amazing based on that performance how, to see how strong junior women are because that's a relatively clean skate and it will now be entirely down if everybody else follows suit with that clean performance to skating skills, presentation, composition and grades of execution. Well, wonderful expression, no question. A bit better expression at the second half of the program. It looked yeah. a little tighter, perhaps nervous, wanting to get the technical elements done in the first half. Not as high and cover as much distance on the ice on the jumps as some of the other skaters, but still beautiful. I think there was a, a problem perhaps on the jump combination, the triple butts is being looked at right now with the technical pen. With a song in her heart as she's waiting. Yeah, you can see that perhaps under rotation on the triple flip. Oh, it comes in clean. But mark that expression. I mean, how much? There's no point value to this Saul's expression. You know, precisely. How much do you think that adds to the overall program of the crowd? Well, it, as we see that little change of edge on the takeoff and an under on the loose, it's interesting because Pete Steele is so conscious that skating skills would heavily dictate the other components. Mitzel's skating skills aren't as strong as the others, so doesn't have as much to slide. But in terms of the presentation and commitment to performance, I really hope to see that the judges will reward that. It's, it, it's the highest, it looks like it's the highest of the three components for Mitzel Kwan. Um, but as you say, it's not as tangible in terms of marks as it could be, but she certainly has cultivated fans. Yeah, the presentation the score is higher than the composition and skating well, skills. Let's take a look at the free program yeah, score from Vince Quad season's best, 120.94. Pretty happy with that score. First skater out in this event with a 183.06 total score for the competition. Now it's a matter of wait and see what the others will deliver. And there is competitor number two, also representing the Republic of Korea, 14-year-old Yu Sung Kim. Kim, Yu Sung. She finished just five one hundredths of a point ahead of Min So Kwan in the Korean event, the President's Cup last week. Can she stay ahead of her now? One twenty-six point eight eight, season's best in the free program skating to the haunting music of the Lark Ascending.
Well, there, despite the brilliant indication yeah, still of the, the youthful exuberance, too excited to maintain a finished position at the end of the music and what is a brilliant skate for Yoo Sung Kim. Yeah, how charming was that? She was so <laughs> yeah. excited with that performance overall. Just left that last note, the <laughs> singing still building. What a great uh, skate. Uh, beautiful fluid arms, a wonderful flow into and out of the jumps. Good speed throughout the program. Yes, and the same program that she used last year, and so opportunity for her to then, with the same choreo or similar choreography, to hone and refine more of the components. And obviously, the tech score started with this triple axel. A total of 8.91 points for that first element. There's the triple Lutz, gets the free leg back in time, reloads with the arms as well, triple toe loop all the way around. Nice soft knees, great extension, good quality through all the jumping passes. And, you know, a really, as you say, charming smile, a radiant smile. It's, it's just funny, tiny little things like that finished position, she just demonstrated utter brilliance in so many aspects. Little things like that finished position as we look at this triple loop, double axel. Like even the fact that her socks are on display, like little things, these tiny details which separate the seniors to the juniors, you know, these lessons learned um, by competing on the, the world stage. It's fun to see that development. Yeah, wonderfully said, socks on display. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, it's noticeable. Yeah. But so charming. And you can see right at the end here, the position, oh. final position, which he broke really quickly and with such joy. Mm, and I think, like, to me, that endears me to you, Song Kim. I now sense a connection to this human, and you almost sense how hard she's worked, because there she wants to celebrate the hard work being delivered under the pressure of this big stage. Uh, that smile is from year to year and inside because of the accomplishment yourself and what you set out as a high please. standard and meeting that high standard. Well, the scores meet Kim the expectations. 126 is the season's best, but it's a new season's best with a 127.77. And that'll put you some Kim currently into first place with a 190.48 for the competition. Well done. Helps to set up the internal competition within the Korean junior skaters for sure as we take Our a look at I mean, Nakai Japan. representing Japan. I mean, landed triple axel in the warm up. We haven't seen it from her as readily this season. Look good. Just a few moments ago. 127.58 seasons best, but she has a personal best of 136.90. Wouldn't that be nice right now? Skating to glimmer of faith and only hope.
Japan's Ami Nakai has applause from her coaches ringside. She's been dealing with a back injury that saw her withdraw from some domestic events back home last month. And it's, I just feel, Ted, I'm glad that we saw the triple axel in warm up and we can vouch for her brilliance. It's just unfortunate that she wasn't able to replicate it in the program. Yeah, really unfortunate. Also, you know, um, a beautiful program choreographed. I'm not sure who did the free. It was Akiko Suzuki and David Wilson, the choreographers. Beautiful choreography and beautiful music. Didn't feel quite that, uh, I mean, connected with that as well mm -hmm. as she has done in the past. I think maybe the fall at the beginning of the program set her off just a little bit, maybe a bit tight. But so quick off the ice and jumps and so fast in the rotation. Very solid technique. And I suppose with the competition. And I, I was reading that Amy moved with her mother. She relocated to train at the MF Figure Skating Academy. The family split apart as she is supported by her family to pursue her competitive skating career. And that's you know, another factor to take into consideration. This is a 15-year-old whose whole family are behind her. Extraordinary commitment, that's for sure. 122 for the free program. That's second. The free with a total competition score of 187.83. Point oh four, and that'll put Ami currently in the second place, at least for the moment. And there our next is our represents next competitor Japan. representing Japan, Rina Uzono. Well, 127.46 is her personal and season's best. She's third after the short program. And she'll skate to print.
Well, Rina Yuzono may be the youngest competitor in the entire Grand Prix final in Beijing, but she's chosen this contemporary, difficult piece of music and some of the most unique choreography and stylization of all. Just an incredibly mature skater who only started in 2017. It's amazing. She's only been on the ice for six years. Well, I remember seeing her in Gdansk, and I just love this program. I think it's... Mm. It, I don't want to say risky when you pick the music, but you wonder whether a young skater like this can, you know, can execute the choreography yeah. that's meant to, and she does. It's just beautiful, and it's very precise. Certain segments of the program match the music better, obviously. Mm -hmm. A lot of the choreography on a stopping action, perhaps, but yeah. beautifully presented. Yeah, and as we see her step up into the triple loop, interesting that her coach doubles up as her choreographer Mahoko Higuchi who used to teach Shimo Uno as we see this Lewis and maybe having a coach as choreographer strengthens the choreography because the coach will be living it every day as opposed to the choreographer she will come in and leave. Uh, that's a really good point Mark. Yeah. And a really good spinner that final spin in the program the change combinations then we may not see that was just beautifully executed perfectly centered so fast such wonderful positions as well as we see your triple flip this one i thought was short i think that one uh, the tech panel are fine with it but interesting that as we see the two double axles the arena yuzono at 13 years of age we will see her now as a junior for multiple seasons before she reaches 17 and can compete as a senior. So she's already showcasing some musical sensibility and avant-garde choices. What will she choose next year? What are we going to be treated to by this athlete over the coming years as a junior? I can hardly wait to see. It's going to be mm. interesting. A little tight on some of the landings, a little bit on forward with it on the toe pick. So. Uh, perhaps the landings weren't as smooth as some of the other skates, but that's so picky. But this competition is so tight that those little details can make the difference. 147.46 is her season's best. We'll see if she can come close to that score. Overall, pretty clean skate. Mm. The scores, please. Pre-program score, season's best, 128.59. They look thrilled with that. That's first in the free program with a total competition score of 196.46 as Rina Zono takes the lead. And two skaters to come. She's on the podium. Our next skater represents Japan. There is a moment always shared between coach and skater. 15-year-old Mao Shimada, undefeated the past two seasons, finds herself in second place after the short program. And 140.08, season's best. That's a big score. Skating to Benedictus by Carol Jenkins.
she was so sad and upset after the short program, Ted, and so I was ready to see the joy on the face Robert after that free skate, but you think in reaction to her finished position there, she's already reliving the sole mistake of that single loop. <laughs> Well, I think she's a perfectionist, so any flaw mm. that she feels she's not going to be happy with, I think she'll be happy with the score. That quad toe comes in at a 2.0 positive GOE, so 11.54 points for that one element. Just incredible quality. Yes, and she's done. We've seen the quad toe from her before. She's landed it cleanly domestically, but at international events, it's always been either a quarter short or under rotated. We'll have to wait and see. It looks like now the technical panel review, have reviewed it. And so now Mao Shimada, like Ryon Sumiyoshi in the senior ranks, is now the second Japanese woman to land a clean quad toe. There's the triple axle at the top of the program. Lifts great height there all the way around. Nice stretch on the landing as well. Here's the quad toe. Watch the patience for the pick. Patience puts the pick in straight in alignment in the air. Amazing. And a very different entry to what she used on the Junior Grand Prix. Way more speed, straight down there. She had a diagonal pattern. So she's obviously been working hard on it as we see the glorious spins that she possesses as well. Mao is so determined. You can see she gets a little upset when she makes one mistake. So she's so focused and so determined. There's a triple sow, triple toe. Gets the free back in time for the double toe. This was brilliant, this transition, changing direction, multi-dimensional movement, gorgeous change of edge spiral with epic extension. Proving that even although the quad toe is the talking point, her component scores, they too are the best. Yeah, certainly in the mid to high sevens and an eight for skating skills. So 140.08 is season's best. She had a 152 for her personal best as we see Mia Hamada, her coach, jumping for joy. And will wow. she, if, if she does it, we, I mean, we've got the wonderful and brilliant experienced Jia Shin left to skate. But if Mao wins this title, she's made some history in repeating as the only person to take back-to-back -back Junior Grand Prix final titles. And she'll remain undefeated for two years. Free program scores for Mao Shimada, 138.06. That is first in the free program for the total competition score of 206.33. Mao Shimada takes the lead, one skater to come. Nervous wait now. She looks anxious that that wasn't a season's best. <laughs> She's still thinking of that single loop. <laughs> yeah. Our final skater represents Republic of Korea. Our final competitor from the Republic of Korea, 15-year-old Jia Shin. First after the short program, less than a point. 134.49 is her season's best in the free program. 136.63, your personal best. She'll need all of that to retain the lead. Skating to not about angels and portion of eternity. We know full well there's just time. Oh, 
Well, two-time World Junior Silver medalist. She was second at the Junior Grand Prix final to Mao Shimada 12 months ago in Torino. Has Jia Shen from Korea done enough to maintain the lead that she had after the short program? Well, no doubt there's some brilliant skating, a wonderful connection to the music, but that Ina Bauer always oh, sends chills amazing. down your back, just beautifully on that tight curve, wonderful flexibility. It's an amazing movement even though it doesn't have a hard value to it it does have an emotional one mm. <laughs> she get whacked by the teddies <laughs> uh, and uh, there's a part of me that really feels for a skater that's been so close to being junior world champion twice like pedalously close and now you know, could she be the bridesmaid again she doesn't have the triple axle she doesn't have the quad toe that martial matter has but Jiaxin can be proud knowing that she has done her absolute best. She couldn't really have done much more. And just gets that around, gets the foot around on that triple loop, gets the free leg back. And as we take a look at the triple sawakao, soft knees of the landing, a nice clean skate. Will it be enough? Pretty difficult going up against the quad toe, and we know we talked about that, but it has so many points attached to that, plus the triple axle. And it's interesting to see that the judging panel, as we look at this, Lutz appear to have gone a little bit more in the presentation and composition for Jia Shen, so she can take comfort in that. But I remember reading that her former coach had been quite vocal about not working a triple axle as intensely and not deeming that as quite a necessity but now at this stage for Jia Shen, the 15 year old how much of that will consume her training time moving forward will she know that she's got to add an increased technical difficulty or perhaps you know there's still Marshall and Jia Shen are both in the high sevens here in the components perhaps Jia Shen if she continues to push the speed and the glide could add push up towards the nines and the components and that could be what she needs to take titles that she seems you know, drift from. Yeah, and that's a little bit risky from the perspective there's no hard points to that because you never really quite know how the panel will score the program components to a specific number, but certainly with the quad or with the triple axle, you know there's a specific number attached to it, so I don't know. It's very difficult. Let's take a look at the free program scores for Jia Shen. A 131.67, that is second in the free program with a total competition score of 200.75. And once again, well, that'll put Jia currently in the second place. She'll take the silver medal once again. And although it's disappointing for it to be a silver medalist again, that's an amazing display of consistency. Yes, it's not gold, but she's very, very consistent at being very, very good and just coming away with lots of silverware. As you look at the final results, Mao Shimada, 206.33, Jie Xian, second, 200.75, and Rina Uzono from Japan, 196.46. All these women are so incredibly talented and so close We'll see them for a number of years still on the junior, and these results could shift based on increased technical content, uh, growth, all sorts of different things that may happen over the next few years. I love the fact that the age has changed and the juniors will see them much longer and will witness their growth and maturity uh, at the stage of juniors as they move into seniors. The building will now get set for the medal presentations of the Junior Women and the Senior Pairs event. Certainly as we look ahead to the Senior Women, Ted, the Junior Women have yet again shown an impressive consistency and it'll be interesting to see if the Senior Women can live up to that consistency as they head towards their free school. No question, we take a look Bronze medalist, Rina Ozona, Japan. They're all brilliant skaters. There's no question there's such little between each one of these fabulous athletes. And 
she was the winner of this short program but drops just to second place for Korea Jia Shen. But as we see the inside spread eagle, another example of her somewhat ethereal movement across the ice. Relocated back to Korea for her training, having spent some time in Japan. She will work hard, I'm sure, as she heads towards the Winter Youth Olympics and the World Junior Championships early this year. And the champion yet again making history here. It's a double axle. We saw the triple at the top of the program plus the quad toe, but all the other elements beautifully delivered as well. And great joy in this wonderful spiral near the end of the program. Remains undefeated. Stand by for the medal presentation for the junior women and the senior pairs. It's, it's actually very nice to see both juniors and seniors in the same three days at one event. And you start to see the distance closed, at least technically, between juniors and seniors. It's nice to see what's coming up. Who will replace the seniors as they retire? We've seen two generations of skaters. And for many of these athletes in the junior ranks, they will train in environments where they will be exposed to stronger skaters in the senior ranks. But you have to assume that the experience for the juniors will really be a catalyst for improvement in the components. It's easy for them to see when they watch YouTube or when they watch events online what's being done technically. It's easy for them to read the report cards and the PDFs. But when they're in the venue and able to see live the performances of the seniors, I'm sure that will inspire them to demand a little bit more from themselves in terms of their presentation and their performance level too. I'm not sure how you feel about that, but I feel with the junior women that that uh, connection with the music is better uh, than perhaps some of the other junior disciplines. It's more mature, more connected. Um, they're technically excellent, obviously, as well, but they're also very connected with the music, and you can see the choreographers, the top choreographers around the world are working with these junior women. Yes, and what's all the more amazing about the junior women is the tender age. We see the bronze medalist, Rina Yuzuno, who's just 13 years of age, and yet perhaps it's because the you know, competition breeds success. The competition breeds competition, the success breeds success, and so that may be one of the reasons that we're seeing them pushed both technically and in the presentation component as well. What are your thoughts, Mark, on choreography? Most of the, let's talk a little bit, the cameras are on the side of the judges, so we quite often see most of the presentation towards the judges angle. Of course, the skaters are also supposed to choreograph and perform to the rest of the building. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's interesting that we see in the juniors choreographed movement, and sometimes they can tap into some emotion, but when we see or hear from the seniors, the likes of Luna Hendricks, who has been vocal about her desire to have choreography that is very much her own, she wants to bring something new to this sport, that's when, when the technical content stays the same as it does for so many in the women's event with triple triples, not necessarily using the triple axe or the quads, then they start to tap into greater presentation. And I think when we watch Kaori Sakamoto and Luna Hendricks, we see just an energy and command of this Olympic-sized arena being a little bit more effervescent than that of the juniors. Not to say they're not brilliant, but they just have to take it to the next level. Now, you are a choreographer and a coach as well. Working with an athlete, you can have brilliant choreography, but how do you get that athlete to connect to the music, to get the feeling that you're wanting to have through the movement? Uh, they can do the movement beautifully, but not connected emotionally. How does that happen? Well, it, it was interesting yesterday listening to or reading quotes from Carolina Costner, who was a brilliant skater herself, but now working in the capacity as a choreographer uh, for Yuma Kagiyama. And she was explaining that life experience is what will enhance artistry. And I think that's so, so true for the choreographers. They have to try to extract emotion from the athlete to be able to better deliver the presentation and the composition. But if they've got limited life experience, then there's less from which they can draw upon. So then for the choreographers of the juniors, they may have to uh, find other analogies for the athlete to help extract emotion. So perhaps they have to lean into whatever you know, they find as their, their 
inspiration. So maybe it's mu music that they love or musicians that they like, like to enjoy or perhaps it's uh, actors or programs that they enjoy. But finding the great choreographers can connect with the emotional mindset of the youngsters to be able to extract that in the performance, which is no easy feat when their brain will be so fixated upon landing the jumps. Oh, very good point. And just final question here before the medals presented. If you could change any rule, what would it be? I think I would or like to add. see add. I think I'd like to see greater scope for the program component scores. I think we're uh, we almost need now the components to be out of 11 to give some more room for uh, these brilliant athletes to get a bolster in their program component scores. Here we go with the Junior Women's Victory Ceremony. We've just watched that event. All six women so incredibly talented. Victory Ceremony, Junior Women. Every small little detail mattered in this event. Quite the lights on the ice. Beautifully presented in the opening ceremonies and every day. From Japan, Uizono Rina. Rina Uizono from Japan takes the bronze here at the Junior Grand Prix Final in Beijing. The youngest skater in the entire competition and Talking about life experience, we just talked about life experience for emotional content. She was brilliant in delivering some passion to her performance, but what will this experience do for her as a skater and as a human? Many chapters still to come in Rina's career. We'll follow it very closely. Second and winner of the silver medal. From Republic of Korea. Shin Jia. Jiaxian second again, but I admire in this young woman not just the brilliant skating that's guaranteed her another silver medal, but also the maturity in which she reacts to that again. There must be some inevitable sense of disappointment to come second after winning the short program, but she just shows such maturity and professionalism. First and winner of the gold medal. Really good point. Really the champion here, Mao Shimada, remains undefeated, Shimada, so focused. Perfectionist she might win these competitions, but if they're not perfect in her mind, there's an element of disappointment. The Mao Shimada takes the gold for the second year in a row and makes history. Now, Mao, having won the Japan Junior Nationals again, has secured her spot at the Winter Youth Olympics. We'll go up again, head to head. The young woman she gives a hug to now. And all three of these women Please have stood welcome, on many podi podiums through their young careers. That's interesting, I'm sure that every medal that's hung around your neck is special, but I believe when you get a little older, closer to the end of your career and those victories that you thought were so far away and only in your dreams become reality we add an amount of emotion which perhaps some of them are not prepared for as a junior it's kind of normal these women are on the podium quite often they move up with the seniors at the world level the Olympic level that might change I really hope that they can relish to see Yogi Elek offer his congratulations to you. Hope the that they will be able to encapsulate this memory and draw upon it beyond the competitive career. Oh, 
a beautiful presentation. It's almost Olympic-like, but in an Olympic facility and beautifully designed. That's a big medal. Please got a lot of them already, but I reckon that's maybe one of the largest. <laughs> a little heavy around the neck. Yeah. Yeah. from Poland. Ice Dance Technical Chairman for many years. Now that special moment. Ladies and gentlemen, Your please rise anthem. for the national anthem of the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, these are your medalists. For our first medal presentation, the 2023 Junior and Senior Grand Prix Final, the Junior Women. And up next will be the Senior Pair presentation. of the seven junior Grand Prix events so in the women's event so the Japanese national anthem be played and now in the final it is repeated I wonder if we look towards the women's senior short program Japan will be triumphant in the senior ranks as well with Kaori Sakamoto in time for a champion as well a great picture of the future Fast forward to maybe the 2030 Winter Olympics, and I wonder, see at Mao Arena, the podium contenders, and it comes their turn to be senior Olympians. So much can happen between now and then. Life is so unpredictable and, and all consuming, particularly for athletes at this stage of their life. So much commitment and wonder whether they can sustain that level of intensity and training and competition for that long. Yeah, and it's interesting to know that obviously Mao Shimada now is Grumpy Final Champion last year and repeats that consistency this year. We reference Jia Shen already, she's twice won World Junior Silver Medals. That's some consistency in our score over two seasons. How many seasons can they repeat that? certainly hope that they'll be able to stay healthy and still in love with the sport enough to maintain this training at that high level of the senior Olympic Games when they're age eligible. Yeah, I, I agree and I think I think physically they these are very strong athletes. They're half of all people teaching on jumps, everything is solid that way. They may have those years that are up and down, but your point to your point, will they keep the love? Not only the sport, they'll keep the love of the sport, but they keep the love of competing and the amount of work that it takes to stay in this top shape, top level, will they keep that love for seven years up to 2030? 
that's 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 the question and that's the challenge if you will and some people may not and some people may you know it's all individual of course and whilst we can celebrate their brilliance today and seeing them continue showcasing such wonderful skating behind these moments these golden victories are you know, life-changing movement i referenced already i mean akai who just off the podium in fifth place here her whole family was split apart to pursue her skating at, at this level. Jia Shen, who's the silver medalist here, she spent time training with Canadian David Wilson for choreography. She spent time in Japan pursuing different coaching. Their level of commitment in their life to achieve this success is global you know, travel, it's huge expense, it's, it's quite massive. Yeah, the commitment is not only theirs, the commitment from the family and brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers and and their friends as well so this is you know you can see the joy on their face for the most part of their training and their competition and but so much of their lives are on hold if you will to pursue this thank but you skaters if you ask a skater Ladies and gentlemen, they wouldn't we will change begin it. the victory yeah. ceremony for in life you in make decisions and make one decision, you give up another. That is simply part of life. But we hope to keep, as you mentioned, Mark, we hope they keep the love and joy of the sport. Moments where the team leaders and teammates want to have pictures of the medalists wrapped in their flag is tradition happens on the junior grand prix no matter how big or small our buildings are or warm or cold <laughs> the buildings are on the junior grand prix and nice for jia shan and, and all of the competitors that have qualified for the final to be having performed in some less impressive stadiums to be here in an Olympic venue with, you know, an audience, not full of course, but 20,000 seats looking at them. I think we might say, you know, smaller venues, right? <laughs> you know, smaller <laughs> and maybe colder venues in some yeah. cases. But you know, that also makes you into a tough competitor because when you train, you're not in a facility like this. You are in, generally speaking, a colder rink that perhaps hockey as well with hockey lines. And so, and this is a little bit different to come to an arena without any hockey lines, now with advertising on the boards, and you may very well train a jump on a particular part mm -hmm. of the ice marked in uh, amongst the hockey lines. So this is a bit of a change for these athletes that come out of a hockey rink and move into a facility that does not have hockey lines in it. Um, these are experienced skaters. I think they've adapted well, but for those just joining the Junior Grand Prix, for instance, that might be different, or in the seniors as well, as we get ready for the Pairs Victory Ceremony. ISU Grand Prix of Figure Skating Final 2023 Victory Ceremony Pairs. 2023赛季，国际华联世界花样滑冰大奖赛总决赛，中国娃颁奖仪式现在开始。Interesting to hear Perhaps. already from, oh sorry Ted, I was just going to say Diana Salata Dudek has already spoken with Golden Skate and said that her standards are higher than anyone can imagine, so that's perhaps why they're a little deflated to be fair. Yeah, for sure, and you mentioned before that they had such a great skate at Skate Canada, won that in inspiring fashion, no question, and hope and work Second, to keep that. But unfortunately at this moment, medal. it didn't happen here tonight. They'll get From back to the drawing board and work towards the ex rest of the season. But stark contrast for the Italian Sara Conti and Nicola Maci, who have showcased wonderful joy in reaction to both the short program and their winning free skate en route to the silver medal here.
winding up to be a great second half of the season in Montreal. Unpredictable what will happen in so many of the events. And we've just seen here the switch in pairs, the expected leaders dropping to third, and there's been movement in what will happen in Montreal. First and winners of the gold medal. From Germany. Well, the German team were not even clear that they would skate here because Nikita was sick after the NHK. But they said they wanted to skate for Germany because Annika Hocka and Robert Kunkel were forced to withdraw and how glad they are that they continued to compete. What a wonderful story and of course now they will carry the burden of expectation for the rest of the season. But still, some competitions come much to be sorted out yet. Nice to see the camaraderie between the teams. as Jorge Elek awards the medals. Xu Shen, the 2010 Olympic champion, as part of the medal ceremony as well. She was part of the Cup of China celebrations as well, so pivotal in organizing the events where China has hosted and will continue to host some of the most prestigious and largest figure skating events of the calendar this year. It's wonderful to see former skaters contributing to the future through volunteerism or participation in a variety of different ways keeps their passion and helps to fuel in the next generation. As you say, Ted, it's going to be really interesting now that Minerva and Nikita have won the Grand Prix final. Surprise winners, their first season together. Please welcome Shen How Shui, now will that impact upon their brain space now as potential favourites? It's obviously had a well, it hasn't obviously had an impact on the Canadian bronze medalists here, but we have to assume that being title favourites may have played into their preparations for this. Well, the timing of a victory can be a great uh, fuel, if you will, and also a curse. A curse is too strong of a word, but it could be, you know, a challenge for you to maintain your focus on your job. And rather than putting the expectations, what can it be? What might it be come March? We'll see whether the situations being the hunted and the hunter, of course, and perhaps this is a good thing for Deanna and Max yeah. of Canada. Interesting that the champions here, Minerva and Nikita, said yesterday after their short program that they Please weren't going to apply any more pressure on Andrea themselves, Derby. despite being the leaders and after their short the program. Controller. So now they may have to tap back into that attitude and focus for their next event, where again they will be focused in a different mindset. Yeah, it's so easy to say, but it's so hard to do because, you know, you're just human and you come off a great win and you step on the ice and you think you should or you hope you could win again. And that's just emotion. And that is management of that is one of the most difficult skills in any sport. And, you know, two of the medalists are two of the teams. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem. Time now to enjoy the German national anthem. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, these are your medalists. 女士们、先生们，让我们向获奖运动员表示热烈的祝贺。Half of the Grand Prix series had the German national anthem played in the pairs discipline. Between the successes of Minerva and Nikita, and Annika Hocker and Robert Kunkel, and now the German flag is flown on top spot yet again at the final. It's a real interesting sign of different skating nations having success. We've spoken about the success of Italians in pair skating of late, but now Germany coming through strongly as well. Yeah, you love this as we approach the World Championships, uh, Europeans and Four Continents as well. You have to love this scenario developing. We won't know what will happen until the day. There's no real front runners. It all depends on who delivers at that moment, which is what the sport should be and what it is in this case for sure. And just before the anthem was played, I was just going to back day and think about how Sara and Nicolo had that brilliant season last year with the European title and a World Bronze. And then they've had a bit of a wilderness with struggling through the earlier part of the season and now returning to form. Diana and Max are perhaps in that, you know, the valley of their success at the moment, having peaked so high at the start of the season. Will they, like Sarah and Niccolo, peak back up in time for Worlds? It's just interesting to see the peaks and troughs of the life of an elite competitive skater. Uh, we'll find out over the next several months, of course, and watch with great interest as these athletes continue their journey in sport and in life. And it's nice to hear in the interview for the champions, Minerva just acknowledging that in terms of their success, she said finding a great partner. And yeah. obviously what a great team they've made. Yeah, that was wonderful when she said that. Having heard from an interview of the team with Golden Skate, they were just acknowledging that now 2026 is obviously on their mind, but Nikita will have to achieve German citizenship for them to be able to participate at the Winter Olympic Games in Italy in 2026. They haven't made plans beyond that as yet, but did acknowledge that that is vastly dependent upon how much they're continuing to love the sport. Just as we talked about with the junior women who have achieved their medals today, the love of the sport needs to be a primary driving force to continue training. Yeah, they certainly stand under the bright lights now, but they'll go back into the cold rinks <laughs> and yeah. get back to training. And that's the reality of these athletes' life. It's not these moments, although these are the jewels. This is the time where they shine and we get to witness it and they get to feel it. But the real work and most of their life is in a darker rink, colder mm -hmm. rink, smaller rink, somewhere around the world all the work gets done. Yeah, and I, I'm not 100% sure, but I, my understanding is that with Minerva and Nikita training in Berlin, their training times are split through the day, so they train early and then late at night, so not optimal. It's not easy for some skaters, dependent upon their geography and their training base, to have you know prime conditions for the pursuit of the improvements. And the support of the facility itself to prioritize skating or elite skating, which is never easy in competition with ice hockey and short track and and public skating, you name it, to get the ice time that's required to be at this level. Mm. And as you say, in terms of support, support from the Federation, I know that Diana and Maxime have the Can Fund recipients, so they have some support towards their skating, but different nations, different supports offered and for Minerva she has to do some military or police service to be able to achieve the funding that she has so each athlete very different situation in regards to their support. I know the Italian Sara and Nicolo often reference Polizei on their jackets when they're in the kiss and cry. I think they have to do some police service to help achieve support and funding for their training too. What you don't do for a passion mm. or what you do for a passion but what's guaranteed the is victory. they get a selfie <laughs> yeah as they get a selfie they take the final victory lap if you will and that 
begins to conclude our coverage of the junior women's free program, the senior pairs free program, and of course the medal victory ceremonies as well. As they get to celebrate and now relax a bit and watch some of their colleagues and teammates as they compete in upcoming events. that hard work for about 15 minutes of your joy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like topping up the, the fuel and the, the memories, the, the joy here, those split seconds of joy and celebration as Niccolo jumps for joy. You know, how much of this will fuel up their, their tank to return to hard graft training? Well, this is imprinted in their minds. They dream about this, they'll see this in a vision, not only at this competition, but perhaps down the road in Montreal and, and in Milan. So that vision that comes to them and at a night, in a night, will live on and fuel them to go back to the rink every day to work as hard as they do and to sacrifice as much as they do. Love to see we hope you've enjoyed the coverage of the junior women's and senior pairs free programs and medal ceremonies. Thank you for watching.